Okay. One of those volunteers is in the right here. You need to do it. I need a computer too. Hey, you can do that. And that computer that could have just switched off for no reason and yeah, it could connect to the beamer anyway. So has anybody got an adapter for uh, Apple? A VGA adapter for Apple? Nobody? Okay. Um, I think you should start the session anyway. And in the meantime, you can try to find, to yeah. ask some volunteers to help. Or yeah, I, would, I would do that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the session is about science glam and it's structured in the following way. Initially, I'll give an, an overview over science glam in roughly 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, what things have been done and uh, the ways of, uh, in which the Wikimedia community interacts with the glam community in the area of science. Then Pierre will give an overview of what exactly they have been doing in France, with, uh, especially with one museum, so like we are digging a little deeper. And then the rest of the session, well this would be about 20 minutes, and then the rest of the session is actually to discuss things that we can do in the future. One project uh, that I can propose you to work on is, like there is a, uh, a science exhibition uh, touring Germany next year, and we kind of asked to provide a Wikipedia perspective, like how would a Wikipedia exhibit look like as part of a science exhibition? That's one thing we can work on. I have a number of ideas on that. If you have other ideas, uh, we can work on that. Okay, so I'll start with that overview. I uh, well, I was still my computer, so I had my presentation was on it. I have a backup presentation for which I just tweeted the link under the hashtag Wikimania which is basically a presentation I gave on the subject a few months ago. Um, so if you want to follow those slides that were meant to be presented here, but right, it doesn't work. Um, so basically, what have we done? Uh, I would like to structure the talk uh, by the letters G, L, A, and M. So G stands for galleries, L for libraries, A for archives, M for museums. And then there are, I would add that there is other institutions. So let's start by the G, which is easy because so far there's no gallery that has uh, worked together with the Wikimedia movement, I mean science gallery, um, systematically. There is a, a negative example in the sense that the, the big image database, Springer Images, that basically brings together all the images that have been published with any journal that belongs to the Springer Empire. Um, this uh, database has included a number of images taken from Wikimedia Commons and from other uh, sources, including other closed access publishers and also open access publishers. And they were all uh, kind of watermarked with Springer, copyrighted Springer, and uh, put a, an, an NC license or some other stuff on it. So uh, it was a lot of uh, copyright violations, actually. And uh, so they were called out on the blog and on, in the Wikipedia signpost, and then they removed uh, a large part of, but not all of those images that were infringing copyright. Uh, other than that, I'm not aware of any interaction between the scientific image databases and uh, the Wikimedia community. Although there is, of course, a number of people who regularly visit scientific journals and then uh, import images from there into Wikimedia Commons, but there, there is no systematic interaction there. Then the libraries. There have been loads of interactions with that, um, mostly in terms of getting access to uh, read access to the literature. So like there, uh, a number of chapters have uh, programs in which they provide individual Wikimedians with read access to literature, be it either all the, the holdings of a, of a library or a, anything that the, the, the country subscribes to or so, or sometimes a very specific collection. And uh, some of these have some scientific component, but they're typically part of a larger engagement of that Wikimedia chapter with the library community in the country or in the city or, or elsewhere. And, uh, Another example is the National Library of Medicine in the USA, which runs a number of services, including, for instance, PubMed Central. And there is a bot that crawls PubMed Central uh, for CC BY licensed articles, and then checks whether there's uh, image, uh, videos or audio files in there, and puts them up on Wikimedia Commons. This is now automated, and the bot has done 13,000 files so far. Uh, so that's uh, an, a significant interaction. There have been other interactions with the National Library of Medicine in the sense that there were edited thons uh, in their buildings together with some experts and 
Wikimedians, and this is going to continue uh, with the help also of Wikimedia, with Wiki Project Medicine, and the Wiki Project Med Foundation, which is uh, a proposed thematic organization in the area of medicine. Um, archives. There have been a number of collaborations between Wikimedia and archives, most notably the Wikimedia in residence at the National Archives of the USA. That, uh, that was for one year. It didn't have a specific uh, science focus, but as part of the large number of documents that they've uploaded, there is it was on the order of 100,000 documents that they've uploaded to Commons. There's a few thousands that are somehow related to science, be it uh, by being like pictures of scientists or pictures of events that had scientific um, well, connotations or so, and uh, sometimes also some scientific discoveries or so. Uh, so there's a small component of that that actually had it, uh, is relevant to science. And uh, there's uh, some more collaborations with archives like the, the Federal Archives in Germany have donated uh, uh, on the order of 100,000 images. Some of them again depict scientists, but it is a, a large mi a minority, a, a very small minority I mean. And uh, so uh, there's not a lot of systematic things going on. Uh, Federal archives in Switzerland will probably be very similar to that. The large part of their holdings doesn't have much to do with, uh, with science, but uh, if, for instance, a scientist gets a federal prize or so, it's this kind of occasion that will be covered in, in the archive. There is another uh, collaboration going on with the archives in Bulgaria, National Archives of Bulgaria. Uh, again, they, uh, the focus is completely independent of science, but the people uh, who are doing that are also involved in a collaboration that involves the zoo and the National History Museum, Natural History Museum, and uh, so there is some overlap, and uh, they have also covered a few scientists uh, uh, that for which there are archival materials in the database. And then uh, the next letter would be museums. Uh, there, that's that's the strongest part of the glam wiki collaboration anyway, and uh, so it is also for science glam. Um, right now, uh, there is a Wikimedian residence at the Natural History Museum in London and at the Science Museum in London. Uh, in fact, he will have a session right after us in this room. And um, there, that's that's probably the, the most um, closest thing uh, to, to science club. And what he does there is really mostly talking about open licenses, uh, training, the staff there, and uh, also kind of selecting um, subsets of the collections for experiments with, uh, within the Wikimedia context. Because many of those uh, institutions, be they science glams or general glams, is, uh, they have very little experience uh, with open licenses, with uh, also with the open processes that we have to collaborate. And uh, so it is important to have someone who understands how Wikimedia works and who understands how the museum works to kind of help those institutions select where to start. Like uh, if they go with the whole of their collection onto Wikimedia Commons at, at the same time, this may pose all kinds of problems and uh, it's important to have some small testing sets. Uh, there's other natural history museums that, are, that have been part of um, GLAM collaboration. So, for instance, there have been several Wikimedia in residence projects in, at the Smithsonian, typically uh, at the at the Smithsonian level. But the Smithsonian co uh, comprises of a number of museums, including the American Museum of Natural History. And so, there have been workshops uh, that involve people from that Natural History Museum, uh, but it was not dedicated to science. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's basically the overview for the four classical GLAM letters. Then I would like to point out that there is a number of uh, institutions that do not really fit into those four letters. An example is the zoo. Like uh, zoos uh, are cultural institutions in a certain way. They contribute to uh, maintain biodiversity. They have large breeding projects. They, uh, for many people, they are the first point of contact with many species. And uh, there is one project in the, the zoo in Sofia, uh, in which they have um, enriched their the plaques that they have at the outside of the enclosures 
with Curopedia codes. So there's uh, 300 Curopedia codes uh, all over that uh, zoo. This has also brought free Wi-Fi to, to the zoo, which has also attracted more people to visit the zoo, actually, it's including more young people, which otherwise would not go there. And, uh, yeah, they are, these plaques have been kind of installed throughout this year, so uh, the traffic uh, starts trickling in. Another part, and that is rather a <coughs> successful part of collaboration, is botanical gardens. And uh, they kind of exemplify uh, why it is uh, useful to treat science gland slightly differently from uh, the overall gland uh, matters. And the reason for that is that many botanical gardens have a large overlap in what they display. Like uh, you will see a banana tree or this kind of stuff in almost every botanical garden, no matter where they are. And uh, this is in contrast to most art museums or so. If uh, a museum specializes in, in Rembrandt, then they will want to have the originals, and if it's an original, then there's just one of it. Uh, whereas in uh, the botanical gardens, the uh, purpose is really to uh, provide people with an overview of certain aspects of the plant kingdom. And uh, so they basically all share the same approach. And this has led to a number of Curopedia projects which uh, have already resulted in collaboration between botanical gardens which are spread across different countries and which normally would not collaborate much. So we have Curopedia projects uh, either ongoing or being planned, for instance, in the botanical gardens of Neuchâtel and Montréal and in Graz. And uh, they, what they do is typically make a selection at, at the Botanical Garden. We want to have these and uh, or those plants equipped with those codes. And before we do that, we want to check the quality of the articles in the languages that are most relevant to our visitors. And so they actually help us improve the articles. They make the selection, typically. Uh, very often that goes into the hundreds and sometimes into the thousands of uh, articles, which may then overwhelm uh, the, the Wikimedians because well, we're all volunteers and uh, writing uh, 500 articles about uh, plant species is not uh, something any one of us could do on their own. And so, uh, like in the example of the Botanical Garden in Graz, they actually checked whether all these articles existed. Uh, half of them did not in the German language, and half of the remaining one didn't exist in any Wikimedia language. And so that's really a significant amount of work. And of those articles that existed, half of them were not up to speed, so the Botanical Garden was not ready to put QRPD codes there. So uh, the challenge then is really to kind of how to start. Uh, like they could, in, in principle, um, implement on the order of 20 or 50 QRPD codes right away. The quality was sufficient, the coverage in different languages was sufficient for their purposes, but they wanted to have the 500 covered uh, immediately. Or, or no, they wanted to have the 500 covered uh, at sufficient quality before they start the project, which is uh, not necessarily the, the same spirit as Wikipedia. We would say, okay, if it's ready, then just let it go. Uh, but yeah, that's just the way they, they define the conditions at the Botanical Garden. On the other hand, um, Wikimedia Switzerland has helped uh, digitize the entire archive of the Botanical Garden of Neuchâtel. They have two main collections. One concerns the Swiss plants or plants that have been found and described in Switzerland, they don't want anything else, uh, so plants from anywhere else. And the two collections are kind of separated physically and administratively, and uh, one of them has already been done by Wikimedia Switzerland, the other one is basically currently being done. And uh, the deal there is, okay, uh, kind of we, Wikimedia Switzerland, are doing uh, the scanning, digitization, and uh, so the uh, the images go under a free license, they go onto Commons, but they also go into the database of the university. Um, and so that's a very intensive collaboration and it covers on the order of 70,000 uh, in Commons files in the end. Um, in addition to that, there is a Curopedia project in that Botanical Garden, since they are uh, working in the French language basically, because that's in the French area of Switzerland. Um, they are now collaborating with the uh, Botanical Garden in Montréal, uh, which is also French and basically has a lot of the similar plants on exhibit. And uh, initially they had the, uh, the Curopedia project independent um, and they were not willing to go as far as the Wikimedians uh, wanted, but uh, since 
the Wikimedians were in good contact between the two, both places and the botanical gardens were not. The Wikimedians finally managed to kind of coordinate uh, the project such that whenever the people in Switzerland said, no, we don't want to do that, they could point to the Canadians, oh, but they are doing it already. And the, the other way around. And so now the two projects are more or less at the same stage. They're collaborating on the same set of articles in, on the French Wikipedia, plus they look around in other languages, and so it is a bit coordinated with the project in Graz. And uh, that's the kind of collaboration that I think can happen in natural history or science glam institutions much more naturally than in the classical arts or, or other focused uh, glams. And so the purpose of this session is kind of to foster that. Yeah, that's basically the introduction I wanted to give. Now uh, Pierre is going to follow up with uh, what they have done in France, basically in correlation with one particular museum. And uh, yeah, then we can open it. But you can ask questions anytime. It's an open session. We don't want to give more of um, I have a, um, a very, um, very basic technical question. Uh, what kind of um, material do you use for your plants? Is it, um, is it laminated paper or is it um, ceramic? Is it metal? That basically depends on whatever the zoo or uh, putting a garden has been using before. And do you know what they have been? Um, what, yeah, what in the case of Bulgaria, I know it in, in detail. I just forgot it. It's a certain. Um, yeah, it's a certain metal uh, that is coated in a certain okay. way that should last at least a decade. Okay. Uh, and in, in what, but that there's a whole kind of science behind that. Uh, and basically, every Curopedia project uses a different material, basically because they're collaborating with someone else, and uh, so they models. have their preferred material. Like uh, the city of Prague, for instance, has Curopedia codes, and they are using also a metal structure that is coated in some way, but it's coated in a different way from those that we have in Zoom. So we basically adapt in part two, yeah. Has anyone uh, collected information about, uh, well, technical information about uh, all these different projects? Uh, I mean, not it me, could be but very, I... very useful. I have been wondering about uh, the technical parameters uh, for our own QR project. For example, uh, there, there can be very different solutions in the different lightings. Uh, you are getting a completely different lighting in a botanical garden and in a dark museum hall. Maybe, maybe for example, uh, I, I don't know, it's just an idea, maybe sometimes it, it could be useful to uh, use, uh, well, some, some glowing material. Mm -hmm. What's it in, in English? Um, Luminescent. Luminescent, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a bad idea, maybe it will uh, fog the picture up for the, uh, for the uh, cameras. Maybe you can't, just can't get... Well, those uh, people who are doing uh, research on that. The good thing about Curopedia, uh, no, QR codes is they're now basically ubiquitous and so all this kind of stuff has been researched. Mm -hmm. The main yes. problem from our point of view is that uh, the institutions that we collaborate with, they all have long-term agreements in terms of, so they have had their supplier of those plaques for decades mm -hmm. and they're not going to switch it just for us. And so we basically have to live in an environment where all of our codes are being living on different uh, surfaces. Yeah. Yes, but uh, sometimes it would be still uh, good to know. Sometimes we have institutions that do not yet have them. So yeah, we, we could influence it, their choices. Yeah, if there's but any the problem, problem is just like in science in general, there's a lot of information and the problem is finding it. Yeah, if there's anyone who has an overview of the materials, it would be fixed on the way. Yeah. I can give you uh, just a inside uh, at Toulouse we are just basically make, making up the, the lightning for example this is totally made up with more flash with many flashlights and then also food shops to have a nice result um, but, uh, so for the protocol we, we don't have a protocol it's the photograph who choose how we want to display this but the photograph are generally scientific uh, knowledgeable so they know how to under the pieces, so it is. So I will start my presentation. Uh, sorry for my English; it's not as good as for our presenter. Um, I want to give you an insight of what we are doing. So I will tell you a story. Uh, this is a story of our museum from regional town in France. Won the picture of the year <coughs> this year uh, on Wikimedia Commons. So how do we participate in Wikimedia Commons and how we are successful? in it and um, being uh, recognized by the community as being successful. So, this is a nice fish. <laughs> and 
we have eaten it. <laughs> After all, it went to the collection of the museum. Okay. So first, um, how did this project start? Um, this project uh, has been growing for, for years because, in fact, in the museum they have a problem. There's only 3,000 3, specimens on display, which you may think oh, it's a lot, but there are billions of specimens in the, in the reserves, and they want to show all of, them, all of their um, pieces. So what have we done for that? They thought, OK, we have to do photographs and put them on the internet. Let's try to compute how much it will cost, make a budget. It's impossible to put everything on the internet for the museum. It costs too many, too many dollars, so they don't do it. And then the president of the institute that runs the museum, I've met um, our presi the president of our chapters, which is Adrian Alex, and they talk about it. So this is a guy, a crazy, he handles dinosaurs. <laughs> And his nickname is uh, the name of a dinosaur because this dinosaur uh, has been named after, after him. <laughs> it's uh, Archaeodontosaurus descuensi, so this is Didier Descuens. In April 2009, he said, OK, I will try to work on Wikipedia. And in October 2010, so it took a lot of time. We made a, uh, an agreement with the city to have a partnership and do that. <coughs> so this is basically how it started. But what are we doing? We are putting files online on commons, the huge library with uh, lots of free license and public license things. So we can share the knowledge of the museum. We can correct the error of the museum because on the tags sometimes there are some mistakes. There are really old tags, like uh, two centuries ago, and they never tried to correct it, so we can do it on the wiki. So it's cool. So what we are doing is photography. Um, it looks like simple. Like that. But it's a difficult protocol, in fact. Um, some pieces are really difficult to handle, and some pieces are really hard to, to take. As you see on the pictures, you, have to need, you need a lot of material, you need a lot of lightning, and then you have to fill the description quite thorough, because if you have a small description, it's useless. In fact, just we don't need something that you don't know what it is. And as I said, the protocol is heavy, because I've shown you bonds, it's easy to handle bonds, but when you come to butterflies, the, the curator of the museum is like, no, don't, don't touch it, don't, no, no, don't touch it. And when you want to take the reverse side, you say, no, no, not possible. And we do it. So it takes a lot of time to, to do only those two pictures because you have to handle it really carefully to don't destroy it. And there is a lot of post-processing. Uh, as I showed you uh, the first pictures, uh, to do these pictures, it's like, 20 pictures, uh, a lot of flashlights to have this result, um, which is generally amazing, but it's really difficult to take. Because basically, uh, in the museum, you are taking in photography small, small uh, objects, so you are really close to the object. And in macro photography, the depth of field is really shallow, and we don't want to have a shallow depth of field on our pictures because we want to have the pictures. Um, Descriptive and accurate. There is an even more impressive picture, but everything is in focus on this picture, and it's really difficult. It's what we call focus stacking, but it's really hard. It takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of picture to do that. So maybe to do one picture like that, you need a day, in fact, to do that. And then, after you finish with the photography, you have to fill the description. Um, you have to say which species it is, which is which person describe it first, when, then we try to describe it in at least three languages, French, 
Dutch and English because this is the most used Wikipedia. And then we have a lot of other description to, to add, but in the end we have something really really descriptive, like in a museum. And it's exactly what we want to do, but it takes a lot of time. And we put it under CC by SA because after we have done the three first language description, people can always do another uh, do another translation, take the pictures and put it somewhere else, so it's really useful. We have an example of our pictures uh, used in magazine, uh, they have been used in pub scientific publication, so that's what we want to do. Um, you can't do it, in fact, if you're doing it on your website. The museum website is just unknown. When you're doing it on Wikipedia, you have the possibility to reach 285 languages um, to spread your knowledge on all these articles. So, what is the result? Uh, we have spoken about thousands and thousands of pictures um, for this project, which is almost four years old now. We have taken about 2,000 pictures. It's not a lot, but it's already good. And on those 2,000 pictures, more than 600 are valued image. It means that on Wikimedia Commons, it's the best images for the, for the subject, so it's quite good. A um, few hundred are quality image, and almost a hundred is featured pictures on Wikimedia Commons and also on Wikipedia. Uh, which means basically it goes on the front page of Wikipedia or on the front page of Wikimedia Commons. So it's another way to disseminate the information. For that it's spread across more than 200 Wikimedia projects. As I said, I think it's something like 280, maybe not the last five Wikipedia because it's only edited by both. We have lots of pages, distinct pages. I, I didn't update the slide, but I mean it's just the, the idea. Same, it's we have a lot of you because on Wikipedia you reach people, and if you can reach English Wikipedia, Dutch Wikipedia, French Wikipedia, Spanish Wikipedia, then your knowledge is going almost everywhere in the world. So the page. The page view. It's like even the whole city website can't never have this, as I said. So this is why we, we choose this out. Well, here it's important also to have a look at the scale. Yeah. Like a typical museum attracts on the order of 200,000 visitors a year, yeah. and uh, that's what uh, the pages that are of yeah. the materials uh, that use okay. materials from the museum get on a typical day via Wikipedia. Yeah. So now, to finish a bit my story, last year at Wikimedia I already presented this project with other projects and I said as a joke, this project has a secret goal, we want to win the Poti. And we did it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, the result, best picture of the year. Yeah. It's really nice, uh, it's a curator for the museum that have taken it. And it's really wonderful picture. And the second one, the NASA. As I said, we want to defeat the NASA. So I'm thinking I have to make a wish today. Like Wikimedia projects have to be successful next year, and especially Wikimedia funds should raise a lot of money. And yeah, I, I guess next year I will say so. I have said that last year, and we are successful. Okay, that was the fun time, the presentation. Now I'm going back to the boring. Okay, there are a lot of private reuse. People are using it, uh, are using our pictures for, to um, to do poster on Amazon. Um, we have press articles, as I said, all over the world. We have scientific publication, so let's quote some: uh, the American Scientific, the Encyclopedia Britannica, Nature. So that's really serious business here, and we are really happy about that. And the museum is. Oh, that's so nice. We could never have done that. 
without Wikipedia, so they are really happy. And we had some side effects that were that were quite nice. Um, in fact, um, some people just saw items of the museum on Wikipedia and said, "Oh, we need that." They contacted the museum and they got the pieces uh, landed uh, for their exhibition. So it's also a way for other museums to find pieces. Or it was lucky, but then still. How did this process work? So someone in another museum would go onto Google and search yeah, for it, and then someone from the museum. wrong museum said, "Okay, I need some piece." If he, he tried to to search on the internet, find the Wikipedia article, mm -hmm. and find exactly what was missing for his exhibition. Mm -hmm. So if he went to the description on Wikimedia Commons, and he seen that it was a piece from the Museum of Toulouse. Then he had the reference of the, of the piece, he just had to call, and then it worked. Uh, I don't know about the paperwork to do that, but then it worked. Um, there are some people that are doing chapter in their thesis about this project, so, well, nice. Um, everything like that. Also, another side effect that was quite fun, uh, it's that uh, a user from Wikimedia Commons said, that's so nice what you're doing, I'm going to give you my collections of shelves from the Black Sea. And here is one of the pieces of the collection. So, with Wikipedia you have interactions that you will never have with another website. In fact, so that's why it's really nice for Glam to participate in it. And Glam Science is quite particular, as Daniel said. Pieces are not unique. I mean, um, if you have a pieces from one museum, then you don't need another. So the Museum of Toulouse have understood that, and they try to be the first one to publish. So I said only two thousand pictures, That's not a lot, and we are only five volunteers, but. 2,000 pictures by volunteers, it's about 500 pictures by volunteers, and that's quite a lot, in fact. So, I guess we are still missing something. Um, there is something that is disappointing for us, because uh, we thought that with this project, other museums will do the same. And in fact, they are just reusing our pictures. So. And they don't bother to publish theirs. <laughs> and even French museum, like Museum Natural Histoire, Museum Histoire Natural in Paris, do that. That's quite uh, boring. But things are changing. I, I yeah. was in contact with the Natural History Museum in Paris, and uh, now they basically all their departments are now interested. And there will be a meeting between Wikimedia yeah. France and that they Natural will. History Museum in September. Yeah, they have. I have to say that they were reusing our pictures first. I found it was first, then it was. <laughs> so, a few acknowledgements. Um, the father of, the, of this project, Didier Descons, um, our staff member, Adrian Alix. Uh, never, nothing could have happened without those two guys. And then, okay, um, me. In fact, the slide, I, I, have not, I have not done this slide, so the, the one who has done this slide. No, it's me and Caroline Becker. So the presentation was done by Jean Fredet, uh, and as it's under free license, <coughs> we used it because it's really nice, and I think it was a good support for my presentation today. I hope you have enjoyed the story. Um, you can reach me anytime here or during week Yeah. Yeah. Um, how much research do you do before you take a picture? If it takes a day to to get a really good picture, how much do you see? Have others taken the similar picture before, so you don't take the same picture of the same thing that someone has already taken a picture of? And this is a really good question, but I think we don't do that. We just try to do the best picture, and as we are successful at doing it, we take the picture of the object we want to put online. So uh, that, that, that could be a, an improvement. I mean, if yeah. there is some, already something that is good enough, we don't need to do it because the protocol is quite heavy. 
but we don't do it right yeah. now. We because try to keep it simple. You had the out of two thousand images, and they're all yeah. awesome. You have only like only six hundred uh, value or twelve hundred yeah. valid images. Because also we so so the other images that's better than the ones you have taken yeah. must be like super good. Um, this is also another piece of the of this matrix. Is that you have to propose your picture to that. be valued. Yeah. So maybe others can be valued, but we just didn't do it and didn't do the research to do it. And also, um, we are pretty shy about our picture. We want it to be perfect before proposing it to a label. But sometimes it's just good enough for Wikipedia, so we put it online, but we don't propose it to valued image or featured picture. But yeah. In terms of museum collections, there is uh, very little out there on commons uh, yet, so it's basically safe to take yeah. that approach. Uh, with Botanical Gardens and also with the zoo, we had uh, that conflict more often, so they are doing research there. Uh, like if they're preparing their plaques for the zoo, they actually included an image from commons if it was available and good enough, uh, but this was not always the case. And in some cases, they have then taken images uh, themselves in, in their zoo and uploaded it to commons. In some other cases, they've taken images from elsewhere, but uh, some were even copyrighted. Um, so, uh, and for the botanical gardens, they also uh, do the same thing. They first now look on commons what is there. If not, then they provide the images uh, so that the article is rich enough to be presented to the visitors. And uh, for plants, uh, especially, uh, there's multiple things that you would uh, like to have in the article. Uh, because uh, well, many of them are just living one year or so, and uh, so you wouldn't want to document all the different stages. That's uh, much different from the typical image that you get of an animal. You just take it at when, when it's roughly adult, that's it, that's the image that you see in the article about it. Now, many other aspects of development are basically ignored, and that's fine more or less, but for plants, uh, they really uh, care about, for instance, the fruits and the leaves and all the, uh, the overall structure of the plant. Uh, and uh, yeah, there is a lot of synergy that can actually be created. We would like to talk more about that. Yeah. You, mentioned, you mentioned in the beginning that um, the Museum of Toulouse was very proud to be the first in, in, in this particular field. So does it mean for this type of museum, because everybody has like, the same copy of a particular animal um, picture, they don't need to bother once you've done this? Or maybe, maybe just like, um, because every city has a, such a kind of museum. So I mean, what is the uniqueness? The uniqueness, I think, is to try to do the really Perfect. high quality photography. The high quality, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, yeah. uh, while there is a lot of uh, samples in the collection that have a um, counterpart in the collections of other museums, there's no two natural history museums that totally overlap. No, no, so they also have those unique aspects, like any other plan. Uh, but in addition to that, they have those uh, parts of the collection where they can actually actively collaborate and benefit from the contributions of each other. So I think that problem that you described basically um, doesn't exist that much. Also, sometimes um, museums have, I don't know if it's the same word in English, but have a type of a specimen, which means it's the first specimen that was documented, and it's really interesting to have this one online, because it's the first one that has been documented. Sometimes it's not in good, um, in good shape, but it's really interesting to have this one. So it can be interesting for every museum who has types to put them online. In fact, we have a special category on commons for type specimens, even for the different types of type specimens. Like there, you can have the holotype, the paratypes, and also on. These are categories on commons so that you can label those specimens accordingly. Would it be possible and relevant to have like the Wikilove's monuments lists for species to to see we have the, the data about the species and then we can check off that we have the Im image and and, and do like a structured list on Wikidata and, and uh, I just say yes. Uh, I could give a talk on that uh, because I'm actually involved in a project that works on this. We could call it Wiki Loves Type Specimens, um, and, and it, it actually goes in this direction. So the project uh, is called something like uh, towards open biodiversity knowledge infrastructure, and it's a European uh, project, uh, but open to the whole world, and. Uh, the idea there is to have basic biodiversity in information, including <coughs> the specimens and also the papers that describe the type specimens, information about the people who wrote those papers that de describe the type specimens, 
all there in one database that is publicly accessible and semantically marked up and all this kind of stuff. Uh, the problem uh, is that we have this 70, 70 years copyright uh, black hole that we cannot really get into or stuff out of. Uh, but anything that is older than uh, the copyright protection is fine. And anything that uh, comes out of real open access uh, publications is fine as well. So, um, the, with, and we work on both ends already, on commons and also in, in the framework of such projects. It's just that those 70 years of copyright protection we cannot easily get rid of. Has there been any work with Encyclopedia of Life? Yes. The problem there is that uh, they are basically just aggregating stuff from elsewhere and most of the people in, in have insisted on a non-commercial uh, module in the license, especially the British Museum, no, the, the Natural History Museum in London actually, where now there are some people who are actually on the forefront of fighting against NC in the, the license, but at the time when EOL was started, they had big problems even getting NC allowed from their institution. And, and so now that's the standard. Uh, NC licenses are the standard at EOL. That you can find sl uh, some portions that are licensed differently, but most of it is useless in the se uh, sense of being portable to commons. But for, Q for the example you gave the natural, of the botanic garden in Sofia, where a lot of species there aren't entries, if it can't find a Wikipedia entry, could it go to the, say, the Encyclopedia of Life entry? Yeah. And uh, we have a Wikimedia in residence uh, at the Smithsonian right now. That's one of the kind of things that uh, ought to be discussed. I, I've mentioned it to both of them. I don't know what, uh, whether it's going that way. Another aspect uh, that we could add on top of that is, uh, for instance, in, I think in, in Kew Gardens in, in London, they have a, a kind of pathway through the garden that is equipped with QR codes, not, not QRpedia codes but QR codes that kind of point to special websites in which they're uh, discussing chemicals that are produced by the plants that you're seeing in the garden. And so that's just a different layer of education. We, we don't uh, have to kind of limit ourselves to uh, pointing people just to Wikipedia. We could think of all sorts of combinations. And uh, also the, uh, in, in a number of exhibits, I've seen several QR codes being placed right next to each other, uh, and the, the QRpedia code is nice in that it takes away the language dimension, it determines the language for you, but uh, if you want to read something more detailed about a plant, you could actually go to an article about the plant, or you could go about, uh, to an article that is about the chemicals that are produced by the plant, you could go to an article about the uses of those plants by humans, or, or whatever. So, there's a lot of other dimensions that we have not covered yet, and uh, that's also one area in which we could try to uh, explore more things. Any further questions, ideas? Is anyone working on something that could be called Science Glam and uh, is not widely known to the community? Well, maybe, but it's finished actually, but I can say it was made by us in our level, so but it's about the if I can show, there is a page on our yeah, association page, yeah. okay, okay. so just few words how it was done. Maybe someone will be able to do this with another institute. <laughs> Uh, would like to kind of help the community uh, 
work on those areas that you're working on. Like, and if you need an image, tell them and they will try to get it for you. Or you can tell the people in Toulouse. Oh, okay. We now have a network of on the order of 20 museums that have expressed some, uh, I mean natural history museums, that have expressed some sort of interest in this kind of collaboration. None of them is as advanced as Toulouse and the Natural History Museum in London. Okay, so this cooperation <coughs> was sorry it's in Polish but I'm prepared now. <coughs> uh, it was uh, with uh, 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 from Max Planck Institute for Molecular Biology and Genetics in Dresden and it was actually made uh, mainly by Polish PhD student who was just working. <coughs> and the idea was to organize a group of photographers. There were actually two photographers and the guy who was working in, in this institute. And he just uh, uh, applied for agreement for a uh, uh, president of this institute. He got it without any big problems. Max Planck tends to be very open for open access and other such kind of open initiatives. Uh, and then they, they, we just bought for them some equipment. I mean, they have their cameras, not, not maybe top one, but pretty good one. Uh, and, but we bought for them so-called white box and some special lightings and other such kind of stuff. <coughs> and they just went there for three or four days, I don't remember how long. And the idea was that they were just walking from one room to another in the lab. Uh, together with one employee who was just checking if they are not taking photos of something which is say uh, under there sometimes uh, f equipment in such institutes which equipment itself is uh, something which was originally made in this institute and cannot be shown before publishing or of uh, patenting so these rooms were closed for them, but vast majority of rooms were just regular labs without typical equipment, so there was nothing secret in there. <coughs> uh, and they were just taking one item after another. This PhD student was just uh, of, uh, putting on the uh, uh, editor uh, what is this and the number of sample, and then they were just taking pictures after pictures. And uh, for the several days, they just made uh, 685 pictures of various equipment. <coughs> uh, and uh, quite a lot of these pictures replace already existing pictures, including my own. I am also a chemist working in Polish Chemical Institute, and I did many pictures of lab equipment many years ago in 2004, 2005, with just a very simple camera and they did it better and replaced, among, among others, my pictures. And as you can see, there are some very simple equipment, such like Eppendorf two tubes, I don't know, probably there are no chemists here, but Eppendorf tube is very basic, basic thing, right? <coughs> or let's say culture, culture plates, uh, uh, just falcon tubes, very simple stuff, but also some com more complicated stuff as well, like, for example, I don't know even what is this exactly, but it's quite sophisticated kind of uh, equipment do, doing something. You will see in the description what is this. And uh, this, uh, this is actually an example of the equipment which cannot be moved, so it's not, the picture is not taken in this white box, but this uh, smaller equipment, uh, for example, this, this uh, other plates are just made in this white box, so there is no shades, and it's really good, good, good photograph. It's quite good resolution. So, and then it was ju ju just a, a single project made by us by several people. It has a budget, of course, <coughs> the, the idea how to do this, and there is summary in Polish what was achieved, and even an information in Polish wiki news about it. <coughs> And that's it. And it was easy to organize it just because we had one person inside and uh, welcome institution. So, but uh, this group of people, this uh, PhD student actually work somewhere else. Uh, the photographers are still with us, but there is uh, no any new idea to, to do this, but we had an idea to, to replace. Of course, that the best places would be 
scientific institute really top one which has uh, really good equipment for example my institute is let's say one of the top institute in Poland but it's not so as good as the Max Planck Institute <coughs> so we have much less equipment and uh, uh, actually I'm still adding pictures from my institute just on my own right but this is not not a project but just side work of mine but anyway this is also the idea to, to, to add some new interesting content uh, uh, by this way to scientific, uh, chemical, physical, astrophysical, maybe, of uh, institute, etc. <clears throat> Thank you. And again, here, uh, it would count, since, since there's a lot of overlap between different scientific labs, there's so many labs that have this equipment, and if you just want to describe, uh, like, either the, the, the topic, if you want to, to uh, describe, like, uh, how microfluidics works, which are some of those things, uh, or D the DNA, titration, this kind of stuff, uh, you can use those images. And once they are there, uh, you do not need them uh, you know, from elsewhere uh, unless you find some gaps. And then you can go to maybe some other institute, do, do the same thing and systematically fill the gaps. Uh, or if we do this same thing 10 years later, then technology will have advanced Eppendorf tubes will be available in different colors or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, well, some things will change, yeah. and, and then we can update that uh, easily. That's one way of, uh, in which uh, we can easily get uh, new materials on there. Another way is that uh, also important to keep telling to the uh, people in the museums or in the institutions is if they were just publishing open access under a reusable license, that would already be a key element, and they wouldn't have to do anything. Uh, because if it's available under a free license, we can take it and work on it, and they don't have to care about it at <coughs> all. But many of them are afraid of this, nonetheless. Because, basically because of that fact that, uh, in the end, anyone could come and work with that stuff. Which is still an idea that is very uh, alien to many curators. Um, because so far they have really been our kind of gatekeepers, or you could call it bottlenecks, <coughs> in terms of the use of their materials. Um, we have to keep this in mind, but um, everyone in the, or many people in those institutions are, are under pressure to publish stuff, and if they would just publish open access, that would be a huge help to us. As this pops up again and again, the theme of the curators being afraid of and not, not fully uh, willing to engage in opening up their stuff, is there something like a best practice guide of arguments with maybe some good sh uh, showcases that we could refer to when well, we the, have these discussions again and again. Was, there is a number of um, case studies at the Outreach um, Wiki, which I think also addresses this issue. It's, uh, it's not specific to that issue, but it is addresses a number of typical issues that always come up when we are approaching uh, such institutions or when they approach us. Uh, because now it's basically both ways. There are many institutions in the glam sector have discovered that there is such thing as Wikipedia that they kind of ought to have a look at because everyone else does it. Um, and so they, they kind of take a look at it, which does not mean that they actually go the next step and do something with us, but everyone has had a look at it at least. And uh, they typically, while doing so, they, they have those kinds of questions. And for this we have a, a collection of case studies. The, the big problem is that um, every institution is different and every uh, jurisdiction in which they are uh, differs again. So uh, certain, uh, or uh, quite a few of those FAQ things are actually, have multiple answers depending on the circumstances. Yeah. Um, I really think what is important is to go step by step with the institution. Uh, try to show them Wikipedia, show them example of what works and then try to get them to do it, but you have to, to go step by step. If you want more information about that, um, we have uh, our staff in Wikimedia France who, who really knows a lot about it. She's here in Wikimania, and you should find her. Uh, she's called Adrienne Alex. You should really definitely go to find her. Yeah. I mean, it's her job. She does that all day long, so speak with her. Okay, if there is no further comments, question. Okay.
would just like to build up and stress the previous point. I think it is very important for us to have a good how-to page with nice, friendly information for those institutions. Just a short story, two years ago I tried to interest some cultural institutions in Pittsburgh in doing this stuff. Uh, having a Wikipedia in residence, contributing photos, hosting a Wikipedia Labs monuments, and they asked me, well, can you send us some brochures, some, uh, uh, some stuff, how it works for other museums, and at this point, about two years ago, all I could find was like a few case studies, uh, not really relevant to them, something from Children's Museum in Indianapolis, and the Outreach Museum, uh, Outreach uh, Wiki had very few examples, there was nothing about uh, uh, there were no statistics, I couldn't show them stuff like okay, how many pages you'll get. I couldn't really sell this idea to them based on information available to me. Um, so I don't know how it has changed. Maybe now Glam uh, the outreach or Glam Wikis have some excellent guides, but if they don't, I really think we need to pull all the cases together. I know there are many museums who have donated uh, pictures to Wikipedia. There are all those uh, uh, nice case studies we hear every now and then, but if there's no central report, they really need to be able to sell, collect it and sell it to them, to show, look, how cool it is, how many people are helping out with this, join us. Yeah, I'm just going to the page on Commons, there's a page, Commons Partnerships. Right, I know this, but, okay. And it, it, it should link to usage stats. Uh, I think there is a Good. Back then. Uh, There's uh, several tools, like yeah. one, one of them is Glamorous. Yeah. Like here I just take the first one, uh, right. first such partnership, and then there, uh, for each of them there is this usage link. Oh yeah, there's uh, zero files donated, of oh, course they're okay. not used. Okay. Oh no, four, yeah. Uh, three files used, okay. We can have <coughs> uh, other numbers, like like here, 400,000 by the Reich's Dean's for the in the Netherlands. This will take a, a little while to compile, but basically there's a number of tools that show you uh, how the files that belong to a certain category are being used across the media projects. Right. So that's uh, that's useful. Again, uh, that's a nice page, but we have those pages scattered across different wikis, like some commons, the Indian residence list is on, I think, outreach. outreach, when the last time I checked was about half a year ago. How the how the Wikipedians in residence projects were not even didn't even have contact information or page describing what the, what they were doing. So while there are some very nice Wikipedia in residence projects, many of them don't really say much about themselves. And there is like I don't think there's a direct connection in this page of the Wikipedia in residence, even though it falls under the same. Would you like to have this kind of stuff at your museum? So it would be great if somebody who is much more familiar than me in this could really compile it into a nice guide. I tried to clean up the Wikipedia in residence page half a year ago, but I mostly ended up when I was uh, said I couldn't even find all the information for some Wikipedia in residence because that wasn't listed anywhere on the internet, as far as I could uh, say. So I contacted the Wikimedia Foundation and told them maybe they can dig up information for those few people. But there's so much chaos, I think, from my perspective. Actually, I wanted to ask about one aspect that's connected to it. I mean, uh, how hard is it uh, to find financing for Wikipedians in residence? I mean, I think if I go to a cultural institution uh, in Estonia, then uh, most usually they are saying, well, uh, yes, if you want to have somebody working at it, well, we just don't have much for it. That's not just specific to Estonia, uh, basically all of them worldwide. And so that's why uh, basically all the Wikipedia residents have, so far have had a different financing model. And uh, there's no recipe. But there is a dedicated session on that, and I uh, would like to. I mean, just that, that uh, that's another uh, another thing uh, where we could use a uh, collection of information and uh, examples of uh, the, uh, the. The problem uh, is that it's not always uh, easy to make that public. Um, so the, the, the next talk will start soon. I, I would just like to mention another project that is, uh, uh, yeah, relevant to this context. And so there is going to be a next. Well, in Germany you have a, um, a project or uh, an initiative, basically run by the Ministry of Education and Science, uh, where they label each year a kind of year of some science. This year is kind of uh, demography, like how we, uh, the population changes in terms of uh, the age structure. Next year it's going to be Digital Society. And uh, part of the, the projects that they run uh, during that year is having an exhibition on a boat that travels through Germany and sometimes Austria. 
And uh, yeah, it's a long boat, 100 meters long, and the exhibition is just uh, yeah, like three of those rooms uh, in, a, in a row. And uh, yeah, the exhibition is normally filled by uh, exhibits produced by uh, big research institutions like Max Planck, Fraunhofer, Helmholtz, and all these guys. And uh, for next year, we are invited to contribute. We, as the Wikimedia or the Open Community, the Free Software Foundation have submitted a pro uh, proposal. Open Knowledge Foundation have submitted a proposal. OpenStreetMap is thinking about it, uh, but Wikimedia has not pro uh, provided any input yet. And if you have ideas in this regard, I would love to talk to you. Also, if you have ideas how an um, exhibition as a whole can be made editable, like that it is different uh, when you go out of it than when it was when you entered it. If you have any ideas in this regard, I would love to talk to you. And there will be a session on uh, the Computer History Museum in Mountain View uh, later on, I guess tomorrow, uh, because that museum is making uh, an exhibition about several, seven technological breakthroughs uh, or, or something like this, including Wikipedia. And so they're th also thinking of how would Wikipedia look like in an exhibit to a general audience? How would you explain what the key elements are? How could you actually bring them in? Whatever. If you have any ideas in that regard, come to me or come to that other session. Do you know what the title of that session is? I'm not finding it on this. Editing the museum or something like this. Edit this museum. Just uh, edit like, this museum. Edit this museum. There, yeah, something like this. Cool. And for, for this ship, there is a, a page on the on the English Wikipedia. It's called uh, Glam uh, slash Ship. And there is a German version, which is much more detailed. With, uh, you, if you don't know German, just scroll along the pictures. They give you an idea of how that looks like. Okay. Otherwise, we're done. And now. It's not tomorrow, by the way, it's today. It's today, okay, sorry. While we edit, maybe you can say the correct uh, coordinates. Uh, room N116. At what time? At 4 o'clock. Okay.